Hey everyone, welcome to Trinity Kids Online. I'm Brady. And I'm Jared. And this month we're making waves, which is all about what God does in you to change the world around you. And today we're talking about faithfulness. So what is that you say? Well, let's talk about that. everyone, I hope you're having an awesome week and making the most of this epic summer. I love summer and I also love that you're here hanging out with us. So for today, challenge time, we are going to be playing a little bit of best friend trivia. That's right, we're gonna throw out a quote and it's gonna come up on your screen and you're gonna have to decide which of the famous best friend duo said the movie quote. Okay, so grab a friend, sibling, or adult in your home, or why not just grab everybody and bring them over for best friend trivia. Let's go. All right, guys, for challenge time today, we are playing best friend trivia. And if you are needing a little reminder how to play, we are going to get a little quote on the screen. And those quotes are gonna be said by two characters. So we're gonna have to pick which character said that quote. And it is an argument between two friends that they're talking or argument or there's chatting, or whatever it is, we're about to find out. Moving in to round one, you gotta decide which one it is, here we go. Who said it? You're a sad, strange little man and you have my pity. Was it Buzz or Woody? Ooh, sad, strange little man. Who's a little man in Toy Story? They're all little, they're all toys. Oh man. Mm, 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 mm. Let's say I think that one is Buzz. Oh, no way it is Buzz. Did you guys get that? Well, no worries if you didn't because we're moving straight on to round number two. Here we go, who said it? Hands down, this is the best day of my life and quite possibly the last. Is it Olaf or Anna? Hmm. What do you guys think? Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go with Olaf. And the answer is, it's Olaf! Did you guys get it at home? Well, I hope so, because that one's is a pretty famous movie. Well, moving on to round number three. Who said it? I'm with you to the end of the line, pal. Is this Bucky or Steve? Which one do you think it is? Hmm, this is a bit of a tricky one. Hmm, I'm with you to the end? That's a pretty big commitment. I'm gonna have to go with Steve. And the answer is Bucky. Oh no, oh man. Did you guys get that at home? Oh, of course you did, you guys are so smart. Well, moving on to round four, here we go. Who said it? Grrrr! Was that Chewy or Han? Hmm. Hmm, well, that crazy sound, Grrrr! Sounds kinda like a thing Chewy would say. I don't know, maybe I'm just crazy. What do you guys think? What do you guys think it was? Was it Han or Chewy? I'm gonna go with Chewy because obviously Chewy makes those sounds all the time and duh, definitely Chewy sound. And the answer is Han. What? When did Han do that crazy sound, man? That's what Chewy says. Uh, ugh, that's okay. Moving on to the next round, round five. Who said it? We're a team. Nothing means more to me than our friendship. Was it Sully or Mike? Hmm. Well, if we think back, Sully, quite the guy. Mike, also quite the guy. They're pretty good friends. Which one thinks the friendship is the best? Hmm, which one do you guys think? I think I'm gonna have to go with Mike. Maybe, and the answer is, it's Mike, yes! Did you guys get that at home? Well, of course you did, because you're all super smart. Moving on to round number six, here we go. Who said it? Only a true friend would say something that cruelly honest. Was it Donkey or Shrek? Well, if we know our Shrek, it was obviously something Shrek would say because, you know, he he really is best friends with Donkey and Donkey's best friends with Shrek and obviously Shrek would say that for sure. There's no doubt in my mind. And the answer is Shrek. Donkey, what? How did I get that one wrong? Oh my goodness, man, that's so embarrassing. Shrek's like my favorite movie, ah. Oh. Well guys, thank you so much for playing Best Friends Trivia with me, holding up more answers than I did, and maybe you guys know some more best friends than I do. Well guys, thanks so much, we'll see you later. 
Way to go, everyone. That was just a little fun-sized challenge time. Brady, great job hosting as usual. Speaking of fun, we've also had fun discovering all about how to be a difference in the world around us. And we call that making waves. Today, the wave we want to make is all about faithfulness. And so we've got this story all about two best friends. And in it, we learn what it means to be a faithful friend, someone others can count on. So let's go check out today's story experience and see how we can grow in faithfulness. As you listen, see what you notice about faithfulness that gets stuck in the old noggin, you know? Maybe a word or a phrase or something that points you to Jesus. Let's go check it out. Hey everyone, I'm Haley. Who's up for a swim? There's nothing I like better on a hot summer day than taking a dip in the local pool. That's another place where you can really make waves because what you do today can change the world around you. You can make waves in the water, sure, by splashing around a lot, but you can also make waves with people by showing things like kindness, gentleness, and faithfulness. I've loved going to the pool for as long as I can remember, even before I learned how to swim. When you don't know how to swim, the pool can be scary, but I knew I could count on my arm floaties to keep me from sinking. <laughs> they work better in a bigger pool. It was nice to have a little help before I learned how to swim on my own, but even today when I'm out in deep water, I can count on a life vest to help keep me safe. Even if you're an excellent swimmer, a life vest will have your back if something unexpected happens. And if you're in a real emergency, there's always a life preserver. Oh, first try. <laughs> When you're out in the water and you're worried you might sink, you can totally count on any of these things. In today's story, we'll hear about two friends, David and Jonathan, who could totally count on each other. They were faithful, and I wasn't really that faithful when I said first try. <laughs> There's always a life preserver. Oh, I feel better getting that off my chest. Whew, yeah, feels good. I'll see you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 18 through 20. Jonathan and David couldn't have grown up more differently. Jonathan was the son of King Saul. David, on the other hand, was just an ordinary kid from Bethlehem, the youngest of eight brothers. David spent long hours alone as a shepherd. He made up songs to play on his harp and grew strong defending the sheep from wild animals. But things began to change quickly for David when God sent the prophet Samuel to Bethlehem. God was displeased with King Saul and wanted Samuel to choose a new king. When Samuel saw David, God spoke. Get up and anoint him. This is the one. Though David wasn't anything more than a shepherd boy yet, he was sent to the battle lines where his older brothers and King Saul faced the Philistine army and the giant Goliath. Choose one of your men, have him come down and face me. <laughs> Through God's power, David faced Goliath with five smooth stones and a slingshot. Goliath was killed and the Philistines were defeated. King Saul was so impressed, he invited David to come live in the palace and help lead his army. This is where David and Jonathan met. Hey, I'm Jonathan, King Saul's son. I'm David, Jesse's son. Can I show you around? Uh, sure, uh, I mean, I've never been inside a palace. Dad's told me all about you. You fought Goliath with no armor. <laughs> well, it didn't actually fit. Look, if, if you're going to live with us and help lead the army and everything, you can't dress like a shepherd. Here, I want you to have my robe. Really? We'll be like brothers. You take my sword, too. And my bow. And my belt. Wow, I... 
thank you. As David made the palace his new home, the two young men became best friends. King Saul often sent David out with the army, and David was so successful in battle, Saul gave him a high rank. The people loved David so much that King Saul became jealous. Instead of celebrating David's success, he flew into a violent rage and several times tried to kill David. Jonathan too could easily have become envious of David. After all, Jonathan was supposed to be the next king. But instead, Jonathan stayed faithful to their friendship and protected David. My father is looking for a chance to kill you. Find a place to hide and stay there. I'll speak to him. I'll wait for you to tell me what to do. Jonathan pleaded with King Saul. Don't do anything to harm David. He's helped you. Why would you kill him without reason? Oh, all right. I won't put him to death. Several times, Saul promised to spare David. But every time, the king broke his promise and plotted to go after David again. What have I done? Why is he trying to kill me? I don't know. I'll do anything to help you. Together, the friends made a plan for David to hide during an important festival to determine how angry Saul was and whether David could come back to the palace. Whatever happens, always be kind to me as long as I live and never stop being kind to my family, even when the Lord has destroyed all your enemies. Promise? I promise. David went and hid while Jonathan returned to the palace and the king's feast. Where is David? Why hasn't he been here? He asked to go see his family. No, oh, I know you're on David's side. You should be ashamed. You'll never be king as long as he lives. He must die. Jonathan's heart sank. He knew that David would never be safe again as long as King Saul was alive. The next morning, Jonathan took his bow out to the field to shoot, part of the arranged plan. A servant came with him. The arrow went far beyond you, didn't it? Hurry up! Run fast! Don't stop! David knew this meant that King Saul was still very angry. After the servant left, David slipped out from behind the stone where he was hiding. Jonathan? David! The friends hugged and wept, knowing they might never see each other again. Go in peace. In the name of the Lord, we've promised to be friends. The Lord is a witness between you and me, and between my family and your family forever. Goodbye, friend. Goodbye. David left to find a new hiding place, and Jonathan returned to the palace. King Saul never stopped chasing David, but Jonathan stayed faithful to his friend. David was deeply saddened when he learned that both Jonathan and King Saul had been killed in battle. Years later, when David became king, he remembered his promise to Jonathan. Is anyone left from the royal house of Saul? If there is, I want to be kind to him because of Jonathan. A son of Jonathan is still living. Both of his feet were hurt so that he can't walk. David had Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, now a young man, brought to the palace. I'm ready to serve you. Don't be afraid. You can be sure that I will be kind to you because of your father, Jonathan. I'll give back to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and I'll always provide what you need. Thank you, thank you. David faithfully cared for Mephibosheth and his family for the rest of their lives, just as he had promised his friend, Jonathan. David and Jonathan were faithful friends. They could count on each other in good times and bad. David was even a faithful friend after Jonathan died. David kept his promise and took care of Jonathan's son. You can show faithfulness too, by being the kind of person others can count on. That means keeping your promises, doing what you'll say you'll do. It means not talking bad about people behind their backs. And there are other ways to be faithful. If someone's scared of trying something new, you can help encourage them. 
If something unexpected happens to someone, you can have their back. There are a lot of things you can do to be faithful. Small things. It's not like you have to save someone's life, but you could. Faithfulness can spread like a wave. So if you want friends you can count on, you should be someone you can count on. Here's the one thing to remember today. Be faithful so others can count on you. And don't forget, God is always faithful. When you need help, ask God. God gives you the Holy Spirit when you put your trust in Jesus. Jesus truly is a life preserver. Oh, see you next time. That was a really great story. So, what did you notice at home that connected with your story? Uh, something I noticed was when Haley said, God is always faithful. And that really connected with me for good reason. Mm. And what reason might that be? Because I can be faithful to others because God is faithful to me. I love that so much. Well, did you guys know that God always keeps his promises? He is always there and he is the one we can count on. When he lives in our hearts and he is the center of our story, he helps us be faithful to others. Hey, just know that we're so proud of you and all the ways you've been waking in the world around you this month. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. We had so much fun and we hope you did too. We're out for today, but stay tuned for the so-and-so show. It's just coming up next and we will see you next week. It's pool day, it's pool day. I'm dancing cause it's pool day. I don't know what to say, but that's okay. It's pool day. Hey, hey, Brandon, you, you ready to go, bud? Almost. Hey. It's pool day, it's pool day. Yeah. Hey, listen, buddy, I know that you're very nervous about going to the pool because of your swimming skills, but listen, friend, you don't have to worry about anything. I got your back. I will not leave your side for one second. Oh, that's really reassuring. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you can count on me. If you start to sink, I will lift you up. If you get scared, I will give you a pep talk. You are in good hands. I will be there for you. One, two, three, four. I really appreciate it, John. Yeah, that's right, man. You are my friend and I am your rock. Mm -hmm. oh. Hello? Yes, I am interested in the car warranty. Okay, I'm coming out. All right, I think I'm ready. Do you, do you think it's too much? John? Oh. Oh. John? Do you think it's too- whoa, whoa, whoa! John! John, I could use one of those pep talks! Greetings, greetings, one and all! I'm John. I'm Brandon, and this is the So-and-So Show. John! Yes, Brandon. Tell me if this has ever happened to you. I got so embarrassed. Oh, yeah, I've been embarrassed lots of times. Well, I'm sure that's true, but let me tell you what happened first. Oh, got it. Okay, so I went to the movies yesterday, and after I bought my ticket, the lady at the box office said, enjoy the show, and I said, without thinking, you too. <laughs> I mean, you see, she wasn't <laughs> going to a movie. Why would I say that? And I said it with confidence, too, so everyone in the line heard me. I felt so dumb. Has that ever happened to you? Well, no, no, not that exactly. But I have made a fool of myself in, in the public uh, arena <laughs> where people watch. It's true. I tripped in a store recently and knocked over a mannequin. Then I picked it back up and I apologized to the mannequin. Oh, no. Yeah, I have no idea what the people around me were thinking in their minds. I know what they were thinking. What? They were thinking, cuckoo. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool, though, if we could actually see what was going on in people's minds? Oh, you mean like hear their inner thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. Anyway, uh, we should get on with this thing. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got a terrific show planned for you today. I'm sure Kellen's Bible story is going to be exceptionally biblical. From the Bible. But before that, we're going to have a little fun with a game my co-host has prepared for us. John? Uh, yes. Introduce the game, my friend. Uh, the game. That's right. Remember, I told you I was going to be super busy, and you said that you were going to take care of it. I said that? John. Oh, I'm kidding. Uh, no. oh, That's good. I'm kidding. Okay. I said I'd prepare a game for the show. You know, you know I prepared a game for the show. You did. Yeah, totally. 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 <laughs> I totally forgot to prepare a game for the show. It completely slipped my mind. I've got to think fast so Brandon doesn't realize I dropped the ball.
Ball. Balls bounce. Uh, bouncing. Baby, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Water. Water is wet, and super soakers make things wet. Let. Met. Met. Jet. Bet. Fat. Uh, I'm stuck. Duck. Yes. It's time to play and knock the duck off the other person's head with a super soaker. Oh, that's what you planned for. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you like it? Oh, I think it's a great idea. Oh, <laughs> good. I do not think this is a great idea. John sounds like he came up with it off the top of his head, which is frustrating because he clearly said that he would take care of this game. I'm so angry right now. I'm so excited right now. Let's do this thing. <laughs> All right, hit the button. Okay. Okay, uh, why don't you tell everyone how this works, John? You mean you want me to tell them the rules to knock the duck off the other person's head with a super soaker? Yeah, it's your game that you planned for, like you said you would. Okay. So what we're gonna do is try and knock the duck off the other person's head. Why am I explaining this game? The rules are right there in the title of the game. I think Brandon's making fun of me. With a super soaker. Okay, okay, that's good. That's very concise. Uh, and is there a winner to this game? Yeah. Yeah. The winner is the person who knocks the duck off the other person's head. With the super soaker. Yes. Okay. Is he getting annoyed with me? I'm the one who should be annoyed. He didn't keep his word. And now I'm gonna get soaking wet. And so will he. <laughs> Ready, go. Okay, fine. You know, I think Brandon's missing the duck on purpose. I think he's trying to get back at me. What kind of friend would do that? I'll show you what kind of friend. <laughs> this is getting out of hand. No one's gonna win this game. Somebody should really say something. Oh, it's Bible story time with Kevin. How's it going, gentlemen? Not too bad, Kellen. Just hanging out with my always faithful friend, John. Yeah, me and my quick to forgive friend, Brandon and I have been having so much fun today. Mm. Uh, okay. Well, I'm so glad you're feeling so friendly because today's story is all about two of the most faithful friends in the Bible. Great. Hey, take it away, Kellen. All righty then. Today's story is all about David and his friend Jonathan. You've probably heard of David. God had chosen David to be the next king of Israel while he was just a shepherd boy. David was most famous for going up against a giant in battle. Goliath! You come to fight against me with a sword, but I come against you in the name of the Lord. <laughs> uh, take your best shot, pipsqueak. <laughs> <gasps> yeah! Oh. oh, that's gonna leave a mark. No, it's worse. Oh. 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 I'm dead. After he defeated Goliath, everyone knew David's name including the king of Israel, King Saul, and Saul's son, the prince, Jonathan. I'm Jonathan. I'm David. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> hey, let's promise to be friends forever. Okay. Here, I want you to have my sword. What? Whoa. <laughs> and princely robe. 
Oh, wow. Thanks. Jonathan and David became best friends. Through thick and thin, they promised to be faithful to one another. King Saul gave David a high rank in his army, and he let David live in the palace. Everything seemed perfect. That sounds nice, David. Thank you, my king. Oh, can you hear the people outside? <laughs> Probably here to tell me how awesome I am. We, we love Saul! Saul. We love Saul! Yes, 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 I am amazing! We love David more! We love David more! What? Oh! David's fame made Saul burn with jealousy, so he tried to kill David. Yikes! While David went into hiding, Jonathan remained faithful to his friend. Jonathan covered for David and stood up for him when David wasn't even there for the new moon feast. So, why isn't David eating with us? Uh, he had other plans. But David's great though, isn't he? <laughs> uh, I mean, the way he defeated Goliath <sighs> and uh, the, the way he leads your armies. Uh, uh, they, Plays a mean harp, too. Oh, you're on his side! Ugh, don't you understand? You'll never be king as long as David is alive. David must die! <laughs> Again, Jonathan was faithful. He came up with an elaborate plan to warn his friend. Oh, pew! The arrows went far beyond you. Run fast. Don't stop. Is that the signal that your dad is still trying to kill me? Yes. I said run fast. I guess this is goodbye, old friend. I guess so. I promise you'll always be kind to me, just as the Lord is. I promise. And, and if I have children someday, promise you'll be kind to them too. Of course. <laughs> Goodbye. Go. Go! <sighs> David went into hiding. King Saul kept trying to find him. When David was older, Saul died. David's friend Jonathan, well, he died too. And David became king just as the Lord said he would. And here's the most amazing part of the story. King David never forgot the promise he made to Jonathan. Jonathan did have a child, a son named Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. I am ready to serve you. <laughs> Don't be afraid. I'll be kind to you because of your father, Jonathan. I'll return all the lands that belong to your grandfather, Saul. Uh, and I'll provide for whatever you need. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Even after Jonathan died, David was faithful to his friend. And that's what friends do. They care for each other, they're honest with each other, and they do what they say they'll do. The end. What'd you guys think? I was not a good friend today. I said I'd prepare a game for the show, and I didn't do it, and I'm so sorry, man. No, I haven't been a good friend either, John. Another thing friends do is forgive one another when someone messes up. Yeah, well, so. being faithful is hard, Kellen. It can be hard, for sure. That's why it's good that God gave us the Holy Spirit who can help us show faithfulness. And it's also good to remember that if you want to have the kind of friend you can count on, you should be the kind of friend you can count on. Mm. That's how faithfulness spreads. Thanks, Kellen. We can always count on you. Oh, yeah. You always say what's on your mind. Thanks. You bet. Oh, I sure hope everyone enjoyed the Bible story today. I, I thought it was a good one. Mephibosheth is hard to say. It's Mephib Mephibosheth. See you next time. Hey, bye. You know what, Brandon, from now on, I'm going to try to be the kind of friend you can count on. Me too, John. And when we mess up, 
let's just tell each other what's on our mind instead of keeping it to ourselves. Okay, you wanna know what I'm thinking right now? Oh, definitely. Reveal the question! Ooh, all right. How can you be someone people can count on? Uh, you can be like David and Jonathan. You could care for each other and keep your promises. Yeah, or do what you say you'll do. Yeah, and you can save each other from angry kings. Yeah, seems unlikely, but sure. Hey, what are some ways you can think of? How can you be someone people can count on? Talk about it together, and we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Bye. Goodbye. See ya. It was a really good show today. And even though John didn't have a game plan in advance, I, I thought the game he came up with off the top of his head was pretty entertaining. You know, John is so good at coming up with ideas quickly like that. Sometimes I wish I was like him. Sometimes I, sometimes I wish that. <coughs> I wish I could. <coughs> could you tone down the haze a little bit? Oh, sorry.